kids books they're cheap to sell usually even cheaper to pick up but do they sell keep watching and find out hey eh? is that more of a proper intro ah who knows anyway I've only got six live orders if you want to put it that way to show you today yesterday afternoon and evening were very very slow kind of hitting that hundred pound sales cap and then the sales stop every day it used to happen before the Christmas period and it seems to be kicking back in but after yesterday's video um, there were I think four orders went out they were all quite good orders but I had to get them packed up and shipped out because they came in before my uh, indie shipping deadline but I'll stick something up here probably or maybe up here I don't know it'll be on one side or the other um, and show you what they were whilst I tell you what they were so the first one that went out was the Moreland Dynasty by Cynthia Harold Eagles and um, so thank you for those that shared information on what that series was when I showed you them in my pickup the other day and um, something I'd never seen never heard of but I picked up books one to seven in hardcover from 1984 they were from listed them up just as one bundle like that and they sold rather quickly for 24.99 so that was quite nice apparently there's 35 odd in the series so i'll keep my eyes open for them in the future as should everyone else so that's the moreland dynasty by cynthia harrod eagles the next lot that went out was another bundle box set so it was michael moorcock's do, do, do the history of the runestaff box set so that was three or four books in that set um, so vintage fantasy again from I think the 80s possibly late 70s uh, round about there 1977 I think that says on the screen my eyes ain't great you know um, and they sold for 25 99 so that was another nice wee sale next up we have a more generic normal sale um, again from pick up at the weekend so UFOs, GFK and Elvis conspiracies you don't have to be crazy to believe by it's some comedian dude I can't even see his name on the screen but that went real quick and that went for £6.99 all of these including postage the final bundle that went out yesterday before the postage cut off was a Sven Hassel bundle um, I picked a load of these up ages ago uh, Sven Hassel, Leo Kessler kind of vintage war books I usually grab them when I see them so this was five paperbacks from the 70s um, all in good to very good condition um, I've been swithering whether or not to stick them on in a build your own listing but I had six in total so I stuck these five up all in one batch for £18 plus postage so we got £21.99 for those five paperbacks so Sven Hassel Vintage Michael Moorcock Vintage Moreland Dynasty probably Vintage that you want to be looking for all seem to sell really well quite quickly um, other than the Michael Moorcock which have been up for maybe a couple of months the rest have all been listed in the last few days and have sold quickly so definitely worth grabbing them as you go along right on to today's orders kids books kids books kids books you, you know I like selling them uh, a lot of the places that I can go to and do go to um, the kids books are cheaper than the grown up books you know they'll be doing 5 for a pound 7 for a pound 10 for a pound even you know 10 pence each so I always have a dig through and there's a handful of authors that I'll pick up and add to my big bundles there's probably a lot of other authors that sell equally as well I just haven't discovered them yet so make what you will of that um, I've got a big stack of books by other authors and I need to decide exactly how to approach them um, at some point I'm going to sort through them and work out right if I got 12 of these if I got 20 of these and get them listed up and see how they go but today the first of the kids bundles is everybody's favourite Julia Donaldson so we've got the ugly five 
monkey puzzle. What else have we got here? Yep. Tedler. Chocolate mousse for greedy goose and Tyrannosaurus drip. So the five arrows went for £12.84, which is quite nice. Next, we've got another bundle of Julia Donaldson. So that's in the last two days, about 20 of these have sold. It's it's easy. We've got Tabby McTat board book, Rabbit's Nap, Lift the Flat book, Follow the Swallow, Zog board book. The sticker says it comes with a CD. The CD ain't and CD isn't in this, and that has obviously been disclosed. And another copy of the Ugly Five hardcover. So again, twelve pounds eighty four. So that's nice bundles. I like it when bundles sell like that. And then guess what? We've got another bundle of kids books. A bit different this time. We've got some Roald Dahl. So. Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Giraffe, The Pelly and Me, The Magic Finger, BFG, an old Tetley's edition, Matilda and The Witches. So six Roald Dahl books there and the six of them went for £14.59. So, you know, six orders so far, so far. Three of them kids books, or bundles of kids books, always nice. Next, not a kids book, but one of the Folio Society books. What have we got? The Lady in the Van and Three Stories by Alan Bennett. So again, these Folio Society books just keep ticking out. Beautiful books. You see them cheap, pick them up, don't sell fast, but they do sell for reasonable money. This one, not the biggest sale in the world, but still eighteen ninety nine for that one little book there. And then we have another slightly different sale. BMA Guide to Sports Injuries, British Medical Association. So Adorian Kindrulluri. Uh good condition. I picked up a stack of these sports, you know, training books, injury books, blah, blah, health and fitness stuff. Uh, a few months ago probably and nothing really much has happened with them except for yesterday and then today a couple of them have sold so that's quite nice and that went for £8.69 so again a wee bit above average on the book sales so all quite good final order so let's say not a huge amount of live stuff going out but overall a reasonable order value for what it is but the last bundle more kids books this time it is Mr. David Williams. So we've got the Beast of Buckingham Palace. That's a, a first edition. So that bumps up the overall uh, value of the order. Then we've got Demon Dentist. Awful Ante. Billionaire Boy. And Rat Burger. All in very good condition. Listed as good, but all in very good condition. And they went for a grand total of... £17.57 so I say not a not a crazy day of orders um, relatively slow the six live orders that's about 85 quid's worth so I thought to eBay I thought to postage I thought to me so about £30 profit before taking out all my packaging costs, the cost of the books, etc. Um, the stuff that went out yesterday but wasn't here and it was up in that corner or that corner showing you where it was. The Moorcock, the Thingamajig Eagles, Sven Hassel and the UFOs book. That was about another uh, 80-ish pounds so Roughly the same, so it's about fifty to sixty pounds profit. Um, going back into the business to buy even more books, maybe pay a couple of bills at the end of the month, you know that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, not a bad day, although it doesn't look like much right here and right now. Um, yeah, that's that's really all I've got to say on the orders today. Um, it's a bit of a short one. 
I was just having a wee look to see if there were any comments to come back on. Let's have a wee scan at these. What have we got? Oh, I'm talking yesterday about being a bit disappointed with Royal Mail and my experiences with other carriers like Every and Yodel and uh, Stuff Your Projects, saying that they've been finding the best service from Every. Well, that's interesting, good to know, because they're a lot cheaper than Royal Mail. Um, so I'll maybe do a wee survey or something at some point. I mean, if anybody, who, who do you use? Who's your preferred carrier at the moment if you are selling stuff? Do you stick with Royal Mail because they're traditional? Or do you have good success with Every or Yodel? Who do you find is the best? Um, might be different types of parcels and packages getting sent, which are better with different carriers. I don't know. But who do you find the best? It would be interesting to hear that. And who do you prefer getting things delivered by? Because that's a big part of it as well. Um, I actually don't like it when things are sent by Royal Mail to me because they stick a card through the door half the time I'm in the house and they stick a card through the door and then our local office is only open for two hours a day they're not out in the middle of nowhere but 8 till 10 every day is the only time it's open so you've then got to try and find a way to get to them in that period to go and pick it up the real everything never works because they just card you again and then send it back um, every if I'm not there They've got a couple of places that they'll leave it for me because I've got that set up with them. Uh, Yodel, the same, DPD. They give you a, a spot so you know when they're coming. Um, Royal Mail, I think, to be the, the most difficult to receive things from. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Who's your, who's your preference? Uh, what else have we got on here? Any recommendations, please, for books that smell of cigarette smoke? How to get rid? That's... Andrew Ward, 4397. Andrew, I've never had any luck with that. I've tried, not books necessarily, um, because I've, if I've paid pennies for a book and it's stinking a cigarette smoke, which hasn't happened very often at all, to be honest, maybe once or twice, it's just getting binned. I cannot get it out of the books. I've tried with clothes in the past to hit them with an ozone machine, um, which means you need to lock them in a room somewhere blast it full of ozone and then leave it for hours so you don't poison yourself um, and varying success but that's the closest I've managed to come to that you can spray them with all sorts of things but once that spray wears off you tend to end up with still the same underlying reek and if somebody is a non-smoker which most people are these days it's going to be noticeable you put something like that in a room and suddenly the whole room stinks of old steel cigarettes so I, I honestly don't know if there's any way to get rid of that especially from books you don't want to be getting them wet or spraying them up with anything because that's just going to destroy them otherwise so unless it's something really valuable that you want to make sure you can sell then bin it start again that's that's what I would do uh, what else have we got here alright One question which I will very quickly answer just now, but I'm going to do something more on it very, very shortly. So, Alan is Art5988. He's got a big white tiger in his profile picture. What's that from? I recognise that, but I can't quite see that image. How are you managing to buy books for 25 pence? Uh, just go around the different charity shops until you find ones that sell them at the price you're looking for. Simple as that. Once you find somewhere which can provide them for what you want to pay, and uh, when I started doing this, I'd be travelling 25, 30 miles to get to the right shops to pick up books at the right price. Um, and I don't go to them as often now because I've found some places much, much more local where I can jump up and down to them. But find the right place, two, three so suppliers where you can get them for a decent price. And at 25p is a great price. It's fantastic. Cheaper than that would be absolutely banging. But to be honest, I'm happy to pay anything up to like 50 pence a book to still make a profit on them when I turn them over. Um, so places that'll do two for a pound, three for a pound, four for a pound, 50 pence each, whatever it might be. If you find them, start going in and just buy a big bundle from them and then go back 
a wee bit later, a day later, a few days later, and buy another big bundle from them and keep doing that. Quite quickly, you'll see how quickly they, they can replace their stock. Um, some places, you go in and you clear them out and you go back a week later and they've got nothing new in. But most places, books get donated regularly. And if they're moving them, then they're more happy to take them in and they'll get them out. And once you've been doing that for a few weeks, they will know who you are and they will start, you know, giving you books to buy rather than just going in and seeing what's on the shelves. So work on that, build on that. Don't go in and try and smooth talk and blag your way into getting extra from them. Just be consistent in what you do. Go in, buy a lot of books, go back, buy a lot of books, go back, buy a lot of books. They will soon know you and they will be expecting you to go in and buy 50, 100, 200 books at a time and they will do what they can to facilitate that. They make a bit of money, which they're always want to do because that's the purpose of charity shops. And it also means that they, if they've got a lot of the stock at the back, they can get it cleared out and cleared through because if they know you're coming in, they'll make sure it's available for you. So just find those few places where it is the right price and keep going. There will be parts of the country, I've got no doubt, where everything's like British Heart Foundation, where they want five, six pound a book. Obviously, you're not going to make any money on that, off of that. You know, even at a pound, you'd have to be very, very selective to make any money off it. But there will always be something somewhere, and it might be you have to wait for car boot sale season, church sales, whatever it is, and just go out and buy as many as you can at a time there and try and get them for that 50 pence or less. But yeah, charity shops, just keep buying them. Just keep going. One more. Where are we? Do, 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 do. How do I, as a brand new seller, handle the 10 listings a month cap? How do I get rid of this? Danielle Wheels. Well, you can't get rid of it. Then eBay is set up to make sure that people don't spam listings onto it. So if you're a new seller, you will have that 10 cap until you have a bit of history with them. So the way to get rid of it is to develop that history as quickly as possible. There's a couple of things you can do to expedite that. You can give stuff away, take a hit just to get some feedback going and just to get some sales generated. So if, you know, talking about books, you pick up a copy of Rat Burger and World of Books are selling it for £3.50, stick it up for 99p free post. You're going to lose money. That's it. You know, maybe you're going to take the 30 pence and then they're going to take another 15, 20 pence uh, and it maybe cost you 50p to buy. So that's that wiped out straight away with your 99 pence and then you still have to post it, which is going to cost you about three quid. So you're going to be three pounds out of pocket, but you will sell it fast and you will get good feedback if you get it shipped out well. And if you do that a few times, then eBay will increase your your limit much more quickly. But that obviously costs you money. If you had to do that 10 times, it could cost you 30 quid. So do you want to do that? If you're selling something other than books that are a higher price, so a pair of jeans, say typically they sell for 20 quid. If you've picked them up for a fiver, then maybe you could sell them for a tenner with a free post. So again, you're not going to make any money on it. it might cost you a few pence, but you'll get a much quicker sale and you'll get that feedback process started. You'll get that history started with eBay and quite quickly you'll see your selling limit increase. Um, register as a business seller and it can go a wee bit quicker, I believe. I don't know if that's true, but I think that's the case. So if you are doing it as a business, register on eBay as a business seller and that increases the immediate available limit. But then obviously you've got, you know, you're going to be paying out for shop subscription or whatever it is up front. And again, you're talking, I think, minimum about £30 a month to do that. So if you want to speed it up, it's going to cost you one way or another. Um, otherwise, if you've got good stuff and it starts selling regularly, then you don't need to do any of that because if it's in demand, it will sell and that will increase as it goes along. But it really, you've just got to get a history to get it moving. Anyway, a couple of questions answered. Well, opinions expressed on questions asked. I'm not going to say they're answered. 
I'm not an expert. I dabble with these things. This is just my experience, my opinion. But that is all for today. So thanks for the support as ever. We're at nearly 800 subscribers, which is mind-blowing. Um, so, yeah, we really want to hit that 1,000 as quickly as possible, just for the challenge. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please do, even if you've never watched another video. Yeah, whatever. Hit the subscribe button anyway. It doesn't cost anybody anything. It only takes you a second. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Love you. See you. Bye.